start six and two and miss the playoffs. And if the Giants do indeed miss that postseason mark, um, teams like the Redskins and the Cowboys certainly uh, will try to make their mark as we'll get over to the Cowboys and the Redskins both later on in the broadcast. We'll take a quick break from the NFL goal line. Uh, we'll be back after a quick 30. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in. Again, the number on your screen, 951-515-4552 is to get on the show. NFL goal line after a quick break. The 6-4 and four Vikings win another game led by running back Adrian Peterson. Why does Nick Rice believe that the Vikings won't even reach 500? The answer coming up next on the NFL Goal Line with Nick and Phil. Welcome back to the NFL Goal Line with Nick Rice and Phil Nunziata. And Week 10 around the National Football League would not be complete if we don't talk about perhaps the most interesting part of Week Number 10, which was perhaps the most concussions of any week in the NFL. Some big-time injuries on the field. And Phil, uh, with all these concussions, what will be the significance of these quarterbacks and running backs missing time in the NFL? Well, this is a very interesting week. Uh, three starting quarterbacks for NFC teams left games with concussions. Those three being Michael Vick, Alex Smith, and Jay Cutler. And this leads to a lot of interesting storylines. For one, with Michael Vick being out, uh, the Eagles fans finally got to see Nick Foles perform against the Dallas Cowboys, which, being thrown into the fire, I felt he performed very well. Uh, it was It's very interesting with the 49ers as it led to uh, Colin Kaepernick jumping in against St. Louis Rams, which led to the first pie in the NFL since 2008, which is always a strange scenario when that happens. Uh, the, the Bears, you know, flying high on a 7-1 and record, coming in Jay Cutler getting injured, Jason Campbell jumping in there as they fall to the Texans, dropping a game. But more importantly, uh, it's interesting to see the health of Jay Cutler. I think the most interesting thing about these last two injuries I mentioned, Nick, is that the 49ers play the Chicago Bears on Monday night, a week from today. So it'll be interesting to see if one or either of these quarterbacks are able to get back before Monday night to play the other. The key for that game, if indeed it is um, a rule out for both Smith and Cutler, is uh, the final scenario could be Colin Kaepernick against, um, of course, Rex Grossman on Chicago's side. and. Uh, Jason Campbell, excuse me, and what could be perhaps the most boring Monday night um, in NFL uh, in uh, 2011. We would see a lot of running plays, of course, in that game if they don't run the football enough already. Uh, the key for those guys, though, as uh, Alex Smith and Jay Cutler um, are trying to battle these concussions, these are perhaps the two most toughest quarterbacks in the NFL. We're talking about Jay Cutler uh, facing constant criticism for that uh, Packer game where he did indeed, in a sense, rule himself out for the remainder of that game. And then Alex Smith facing the uh, first round bust a chance throughout San Francisco. He got one more opportunity. That's all he needed. Alex Smith has been very tough as well. These are two of the toughest guys in the league. It'll be interesting throughout the week if he does indeed, um, if these coaches do indeed play uh, these quarterbacks. A different situation in Philadelphia, however, as Michael Vick has struggled. You know what you're getting out of him. Uh, Nick Foles played well, but, uh, you know, in a sense, um, you know, just being an NFL fan, I don't believe that Nick Foles is your future in Philadelphia. Neither is Michael Vick. I believe the draft or in f even free agency is a stretch to be able to find your franchise quarterback. So in Philadelphia, and you're all over the Eagles, Phil, uh, this is a different situation here as uh, you know, Andy Reid is trying to save his job. And Michael Vick has been underperforming uh, one of the most turnover-prone teams in the league. If you're at the front office here as you have to turn around and play next week against the Redskins in their house, do you go with a rookie quarterback that has only had minimal uh, snaps under center all year long? Or do, you, or do you go with a guy that just suffered a concussion and has struggled even when he's healthy on the field? Well, Andy Reid has already said that if Vic is healthy, Vic will be the guy. I don't think anybody that surprises anybody, as that always seems to be you know, the way Andy Reid goes about things. As far as Nick Foles, I could truly believe that he could be the future. 
of this team. Here's a guy, you know, rookie, played uh, very impressively through the preseason. And, you know, as bad as this offensive line has been, uh, you know, he performed rather well, you know, being thrown into the fire, did throw an interception, but anybody saw that game knows that that interception wasn't really on Nick Foles. He did throw a 44-yard strike touchdown to Jeremy Macklin, which uh, then actually gave the Eagles a lead for a little while. Uh, you know, I think with a week of practice, he could very well beat a, a, a Redskin squad that has a defense with a handful of question marks on it in its own right. Uh, the interesting thing about Andy Reid, you know, the, the consensus is that uh, he's already out the door because Jeff Lurie had mentioned that if the Eagles do not make the playoffs, that that's pretty much what that would spell for him. And, you know, you don't got to be a mathematician to know that their chances of making the playoffs aren't very high. So it's interesting to see what's going to happen with the rest of this year. But, you know, if Vic's healthy, uh, Andy Reid's already said that Vic will play. But, you know, uh, if Nick Foles does have to start, I don't think you rule out this game. I think we have just as much of a chance to win this game due to the fact that, you know, uh, we might not know what Nick Foles is capable of, but guess what? Neither do the Redskins. So that could really make it interesting when they play each other at FedEx Field. Well, the interesting part of the remaining seven games is that every team that the Eagles will face. Now, this hasn't been the, uh, this has been a nightmare for the Eagles so far, but uh, during the final seven games, Philadelphia faces teams that are in the bottom half defensively, and also face teams that are struggling in their own right. Next next matchup is against the Redskins, a team that even though they're hot with Robert Griffin, they could struggle if they don't have film on a rookie quarterback, Nick Foles, that did indeed uh, shred up that Dallas defense. Now that one interception will go uh, far into the statistics, but Nick Foles had a very, uh, you know, an above modest gain. Uh, he did indeed uh, play well in his initial uh, game time in the NFL. And if the uh, you know Philadelphia Eagles also uh, they're playing hot for their court for their coach that has you know been on the hot seat ever since he's gotten that job in Philadelphia seemingly 14 years ago. Um, in this remaining seven games, that does indeed include the Redskins, Panthers, and Cowboys, just to name off the next three. Is this team a 500 team? Not even a playoff team, a 500 team. Uh, you know that's playing hot for their coach and that has a somewhat modest schedule down the stretch. Well, you know, to be 500, this is a team that would have to go 6-2 uh, and two down the stretch. So, really, it's it's interesting to see, can they get hot? Which, whether the Eagles have made the playoffs or not, they've always gotten hot at the end of the year. Look at last year when they finished with four straight. But people who don't think uh, that weren't impressed by Nick Foles' performance, let me drop some knowledge on you here. Nick Foles, uh, the other night, threw for more yards than any other rookie quarterback in Eagles franchise history. And he's the, only the second quarterback uh, in Eagles history that threw a touchdown as a rookie, the only other being Brian Westbrook, who plays running back. So there's already a few other scenarios here that point to Nick Foles having a promising career. I've been a big fan of the guy. I was never one to say, throw Vic out, throw uh, Foles in, but this is the reason you have backups. And, you know, I don't want to hear the stuff about him being a rookie. Since when has that stopped anyone else? You draft some of these guys, and they play right away. So, you know, it's not like rookies don't have success in this league. So, you know, I have as much faith as, as you know, I've seen of, of Nick Foles. You know, putting him in, he isn't necessarily a backup. He is somebody who, uh, you know, Andy Reid Andy Re does not draft quarterbacks to be backups. He drafts them to one day be starters on his team or some other team. And the interesting part of Philadelphia is uh, that division. And seemingly, uh, you know, with the New York Giants losing yet another game uh, at six and two, sure they're si or six and three, excuse me, sure they're uh, they only have six went six and four, excuse me. But uh, for New York overall, with as tough as a schedule as they have coming down the stretch, I, I feel it's perhaps just as likely for them to lose. Uh, six or five out of their last seven to round out at eight or nine wins uh, rather than going on a run and still making the playoffs or winning that division. And for Philadelphia, uh, they lose to the Cowboys here, but just rounding out the rest of the division here, uh, you know, the Redskins are one of the worst defenses, 28th in the league, and the Dallas Cowboys also rank in the bottom 10 in that category. And Philadelphia also has to face the Redskins and the Cowboys uh, two out of the next three weeks. Philadelphia can turn this thing around in a hurry. Three and six is not end of the road for this Philadelphia squad. 
Uh, things will be tight down the stretch, as it's been every year in the NFC East. Uh, but for Philadelphia, as long as they win in Week 11, now going 3-7 and seven and losing a divisional opponent yet again will be the end of the road here. Uh, but winning against the Redskins could kickstart a season uh, where as long as they keep the football in their hands, this one could really turn around, Phil. Yeah, you know, you really aren't sure what's going to happen with the rest of the year. As you mentioned, their schedule is a little bit favorable, whereas the Giants is not. So here's a team that one could be on the rise, the other could be on the fall, and they can meet in the middle. So when they meet late in the year, it's really going to mean something. Well, certainly Philadelphia has somewhat of an easier schedule and some divisional opponents to reckon with. Uh, but as long as uh, Philadelphia gets things going, they could go on a run. Uh, but they've lost five straight, so let's not get too hot on the Eagles right now. Coming after another quick commercial break, we'll be right back to some more NFL action, including the big one over in Seattle with a big-time win over the Jets. What does that mean for Seattle's playoff chances? After a quick 30, we'll be back with more NFL goal line Nick and Phil on this presentation by Spreaker.com. This is NFL goal line on National Sports. Doug Martin is blasting onto the scene, being one of the best rookies in the NFL. But this running back, also known as Muscle Hamster, does he make the countdown as the top five nickname in the game today? Nick and Phil will discuss as the NFL goal line rolls on. Welcome back to the NFL Goal Line. This is Nick Rice along with Phil Nunziata here on an action-packed Week 10 that does not stop on Sunday night. We have a big-time update in the Monday night game between the Steelers and the Chiefs, including an injury update at the quarterback position. Phil, what do you have? Well, you know, we just got done talking about a few NFC quarterback injuries. Now we have one over on the AFC, and it seems that uh, Big Ben has had his clock cleaned, pun intended, as uh, – Byron Leftwich has checked in for the Steelers, and at the moment, the Chiefs have scored on a fumble recovery from Byron Leftwich. Uh, looking at the re uh, replay here as it's under review, it looks like it might get overturned, but very interesting now as the Chiefs, if this touchdown stands, take the lead. Uh, they did have a unsportsmanlike con uh, penalty. Uh, Chiefs players mobbing them in the end zone remind me of the Redskins fun bunch from back in the 80s. But uh, at, at the moment, they are either leading this game or, you know, at least have the Steelers on the ropes. Byron Reftwich, more than a capable backup. But uh, it's always interesting when you throw someone into the fire like this. So the Chiefs might actually have the upper hand on Pittsburgh Steelers at the moment. Kansas City playing perhaps the best game they have all year. The turnover, uh, the most turnover prone team in the NFL with 29 turnovers has yet to turn over the football today. What a great effort in rainy Pittsburgh. Uh, this seemingly will come right down to the wire, but everything going for the Chiefs already. We'll be right, right back to tell you uh, the final result of that review in just a moment. But things over in Seattle's side, talking about rainy weather, things certainly pouring over on the Jets after 28-7 to shellacking. Not a single offensive point in this game, and uh, se seemingly you know we're sick here on NFL goal line of hearing about Tim Tebow uh, the things over in Seattle side certainly proving a lot better especially at that quarterback position where they seemingly have a guy that can win and be the franchise guy that they expect he's only a rookie and he has been one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL so far this year and Seattle at six and three a team to reckon with and he, he, you know, this is a team down the stretch in an NFC that is up in the air. Uh, things will certainly come right down to the wire. The playoff chance is still very high for this uh, for the Seattle team uh, with a quarterback that can win. Yeah, uh, real quick, they did reverse the call on the field of the fumble, so it is still ten to ten. Pittsburgh having the ball. Uh, back to the this uh, topic at hand, though. Uh, Seattle, they just seem. They're winning all these games that they probably should win, and then they have one or two upsets. And I think it's those one or two games that are keeping them in this conversation. And like you said, anything can happen. You know, we might look back at the end of the year and see that they made it in by one game, and, you know, everyone will think back to the replacement refs game against the Green Bay Packers. 
uh, you know, that might be the thing that puts them over the top here. But aside from that, they're playing good ball. They're beating teams that they should beat. So if they can just get one or two of these games that they're not necessarily favored in, they could definitely be looking in as a late wild card team. 